Hello readers, it's Sasha and today I am going to be filming my Goodreads chooses my January TBR. January is going to be a very interesting month for me. I am going back to school on the 11th so I will have almost two weeks of being able to read kind of like whatever I feel like reading but I do have a, a, a vlog coming that I think is going to take up most of my reading energy. So I'm going to try to give myself the goal of 10 books for the month of January. One of them being the Winers Book Club pick which I will explain at the end and then nine Goodreads chooses my TBR things. So yes, you will kind of understand what I mean when you guys finally see the vlog that's going to be coming in January when I say that it's going to take up a lot of my reading energy. But yes, I'm going to do nine Goodreads chooses my TBR picks and then that'll be good. So yikes, <laughs> I'm nervous. So I have 569 books. If you're not familiar with how Goodreads chooses my TBR works, Essentially, I just put the number of books that I have from my want to read list into this random number generator and I press the randomize button and those are the books that I read for the month. For the month of December, I picked eight books and I actually feel pretty good with getting them done. I feel like I'm going to be able to. So I think 10 is going to be reasonable just given the vlog I'm doing. So let's, let's get into this. So roll generator whatever number one I literally can't see bring my brightness okay 233 so we're gonna go to page three and gonna go to 33 oh no I just don't have my glasses on a danger to herself and others this is a mental health book I'm really excited about this. I don't remember fully what it's about. So, so Hannah knows there's been a mistake. She didn't need to be institutionalized. What happened to her roommate at her summer program was an accident. As soon as the doctors and judge figure out that she isn't a danger to herself or others, she can go home to start her senior year. In the meantime, she's going to use her persuasive skills to get the staff on her side. Then Lucy arrives. Lucy has her own baggage, and she may be the only person who can get Hannah to confront the dangerous games and secrets that landed her in confinement in the first place. So this sounds really interesting. I love a good mental health novel. I I feel like there's kind of like a a mystery type of situation going on, which as you all know, I fly through mysteries. So that's really good. So A Danger to Herself and Others. That's one that I don't know, but I'm excited to get to know. I wonder if this is going to be like the December month where all of my books were really underrated books. Like nobody knew any of the books that I mentioned. So I wonder if this is going to be similar or if I'm going to get some popular books up in here. I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, number two. 498. All right. Page five, maybe. Okay, yeah and all the way down to the bottom pretty much 498 fable by adrian young okay yeah so this just came out i think yeah she just came out in september i i don't know if i've heard anybody talking about this maybe i have i don't know okay so this is 17 year old fable she's the daughter of the most powerful trader in the narrows the sea is the only home she's ever known it's been four years since the night she watched her mother drown during an unforgiving storm the next day her father abandoned her on a legendary island filled with thieves and little food to survive she must keep to herself learn to trust no one and rely on the unique skills her mother taught her. The only thing that keeps her going is the goal of getting off the island, finding her father, and demanding her rightful place beside him and his crew. To do so, Fable enlists the help of the young trader named Wes to get her off the island and across the narrows to her father. But her father's rivalries and the dangers of his trading enterprise have only multiplied since she last saw him, and Fable soon finds that West isn't who he seems. Together, they will have to survive more than the treacherous storms that haunt the nar narrows if they're going to stay alive. So this definitely sounds interesting. I, I feel like I've heard mixed reviews when I've been talking to people or when I've been hearing about it online. Like, I feel like I've heard maybe even some of my friends say that they just didn't like it as much or they had higher expectations, but I am looking forward to reading this. I would like to get back into the fantasy type story so i'm looking forward to reading this i don't know the coverage is also really beautiful so i feel like this is gonna be good all right so number three is 71 this is gonna be on page one and 71 is even if i fall by abigail johnson 
Okay, so this is about a girl whose older brother confessed to murdering his best friend, Calvin. Brooke and her family became social pariahs, broken and unable to console one another. Brooke's only solace remains the ice skating rink where she works, but no longer lets herself dream about a future skating professionally. When Brooke encounters Calvin's younger brother, Heath, on the side of the road and offers him a ride, everything changes. She needs someone to talk to, and so does Heath. No one else understands what it's like. Her brother, alive but gone. His brother, dead but everywhere. Soon they're meeting in secret, despite knowing that both families would be horrified if they found out. In the place of his anger and her guilt, something frighteningly tender begins to develop, drawing them ever closer together. So, this sounds just really... Obviously, there's going to be romance. <laughs> like, obviously, that's a thing. But I think I'm looking forward to reading this. I feel like it'll cut between the darkness of the first novel, where it's all about mental health and being institutionalized, and the second novel, which is a fantasy, and they usually turn in a dark direction. So I think this this might start dark, but turn out light. So it might cut a little bit of the tension, which would be great. <laughs> so I think roll or whatever three is a success. So we're gonna go to number four now and 506. Okay, so we're gonna go to page six and 506 is The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord. So this is a contemporary. I can get through contemporaries pretty quickly. So it's been a year since Paige Hancock's first boyfriend died in an accident. After shutting out the world for two years, Paige is finally ready for a second chance at high school, and she has a plan. First, she needs to get her old crush, Ryan, to date her, the perfect way to convince everyone she's back to normal. Next, join a club. Simple. It's high school after all. But when Ryan's sweet, nerdy cousin, Max, moves to town and recruits Paige for the Quiz Bowl team, her perfect plan is thrown for a serious loop. Will Paige be able to face her fears and finally open herself up to the life she was meant to live? So this is definitely going to be a light read, I feel like. That's good. I need, I need some like light or really quick and easy to breathe through reads. This has a really shockingly good rating on Goodreads. What is the series? I'm curious. Okay, so it's a duology. That's really interesting. Okay, so the start of me and you sounds really good. It sounds really cute. I obviously like I know it does because I added it to my list. But it just sounds like a really cute book. So I'm hoping to enjoy this just as much as I hope I will. Yes. That didn't make sense, but it's fine. All right, next is number five, 149. All right, so that is going to bring me to page two. 149 is Our Year of Maybe. So Our Year of Maybe is about a choreographer named Sophie who would do anything for Peter Rosenthal Porter, who's been on the kidney transplant list as long as she's known him. Peter is a gifted pianist and is everything to Sophie. Best friend, musical collaborator, secret crush. When she learns she's a match, donating a kidney is an easy, obvious choice. She can't help wondering if after the transplant, he'll love her back the way she always wanted. But Peter's life post-transplant isn't what either of them expected. Though he once had feelings for Sophie too, he's now drawn to Chase, the guitarist in a band that happens to be looking for a keyboardist. And while neglected parts of Sophie's world are calling to her, dance opportunities, new friends, a sister and niece she barely knows, she longs for an now distant Peter more than ever. Growing increasingly bitter, he doesn't seem to feel the same connection. Peter fears he'll forever be indebted to her. Sophie isn't sure who she is without him. Then one blurry, heartbreaking night twists their relationship into something neither of them recognizes, leading them to question their past, their future, and whether their friendship is even worth fighting for. So this sounds really hit you in the feels type of way. Like, it sounds really good. It's, oh, I don't know, it just sounds really good. I, like, a lot of these books are really underhyped. Like, I feel like I'm adding, like, only underhyped books to my Goodreads Chooses My TBR lately, and I feel like that's all I'm getting. But sometimes in the underhyped books, you find a real diamond in the rough, and maybe this is my diamond in the rough. So that's good. Okay, so next is number six. So six is going to be 252. So 252 is The Girl with the Whis Whispering Shadow which is the second Crowns of Croswald book by D.E. Knight. Okay, <laughs> so I read the first one when I was reached out to by the publisher when I first started my booktube channel. And I feel like I did it because I felt like this was the first person who'd ever reached out to me. I felt really indebted to them. So I downloaded the ebook off of NetGalley and just like binge read it and then gave it a review. I, it was a cute middle grade story, sure. But like, <laughs> 
it was really like disgustingly fat phobic and i requested the second one before i finished the first one and they approved me for it so i downloaded it so i have this one and it might be good to finally read it and just like get it off my list but i'm still nervous this is the second book in the series i think the third book came out this year which is why publishers were reaching out to us but i don't know it's gonna be interesting i feel like i don't know <laughs> it's gonna be weird i um, it's okay like it's gonna be good it's just gonna be it's gonna be weird okay it's fine so the girl with the whispering shadow is number six okay hopefully number seven gives me something a little bit better something that i might enjoy a little bit more so number seven is 538 okay all right i can do this so I'll go over to number six i'm nervous now this made me nervous 538 hollow city okay so that's the second book in the miss peregrine's peculiar children series which i read back in october i think i did i think i read the first one i have no idea what the second one's about because i've only ever like read the first book and watched the first movie like i had never read up into what hollow city was about so i'm not going to spoil it for anybody because if you haven't read the first book I don't want to tell you the synopsis of the second book but essentially the first book is just about this guy who goes to this island that his grandfather used to talk about to look for an abandoned orphanage but when he finds it it's not actually abandoned and he ends up meeting all of these kids who have these really peculiar powers and peculiar abilities and they happen to be the same kids that his grandfather was talking about to him when he was younger so this is a good book to read because the first book is still like really in my head so okay this is good <laughs> i'm i'm okay with this so yeah that's really good okay so next is number eight 386 okay so that'll be on page four i'm nervous i'm like so nervous 386 will be so close to the bottom not that close okay 86 you don't know my name by kristen orlando i absolutely do not remember what this is about even a little bit okay 17-year-old Reagan Elizabeth Hillis is used to changing identities overnight, lying to every friend she's ever had and pushing away anyone who gets too close. Trained in mortal combat and weaponry her entire life, Reagan is expected to follow in her parents' footsteps and join the ranks of the most powerful, top-secret agency in the world, the Black Angels. Falling in love with the boy next door was never part of the plan. Now she has to decide, will she use her incredible talents and lead the dangerous life she was born into, or throw it all away to follow her heart and embrace the normal life she's always wanted? And does she even have a choice? So, this sounds cool. It's about a girl spy, and I like that kind of vibe. I was kind of hoping for a popular book just so that I could feel like I'm doing something, you know, useful. <laughs> but You Don't Know My Name, it sounds really good. Like, it actually sounds like a really good book, and obviously I add it to my list for a reason. So, You Don't Know My Name is number eight. I'm really excited. The last role, I'm just going to keep calling it a role. The last role I have is the ninth one. So, that is 52 so we're gonna go over to page one and i'm nervous <laughs> in case anybody couldn't tell um 52 nexus by al davro okay this is a science fiction i got this for christmas a couple of years ago and i've never picked it up yet excellent so this is about a city it is domed and it's evanescence, um, appearance is everything. A natural born amongst genetically altered aristocrats, all Ella ever wanted was to be like everyone else. Augmented, sparkling, and perfect. Then the crash. Devastated by her father's death and struggling with her new physical limitations, Ella is terrified to learn she's not just alone, but little more than a prisoner. Her only escape is to lose herself in Nexus, the hugely popular virtual reality game her father created. In Nexus, she meets Guster, a senior player who guides Ella through the strange and compelling new world she now inhabits. He offers Ella guidance, friendship, and something more. Something that allows her to forget about the real world and makes her feel whole again. But Nexus isn't quite the game everyone thinks it is, and it's been waiting for Ella. I got Nexus a while ago, and I kind of forgot that it was about a virtual game. And I have yet to find a book that I actually like the virtual game aspect. So... I'm interested to see if I'm gonna like this. This has a really good rating. Like it has really good reviews, both the first book and the second book. <laughs> I still have feelings. I still feel like it's not gonna be as good <laughs> as I want it to be because science fiction is so hit or miss for me and then virtual games just add another level of like, I don't like this. So 
we'll see. It'll be interesting. It'll be an experiment. So the final book that I'm going to be reading for the month of January is the Weiner's Book Club pick, which is a brand new release coming out in January. Normally we don't do that. Normally we don't have a very new release, but all of us are so excited for the Alexandra Bracken novel coming out, Lore, which all I know about it is it's about Greek gods who have to live among humans for some reason. That's all I know. That's all I want to know. I want to go into it completely blind pretty much. So that is what I'm reading for the month of January. I think I can do it. Two seconds later. I don't know. I like doing my Goodreads chooses my TBR, but sometimes I just wish it gave me like more popular books. But sometimes it's nice not to read just popular books. Sometimes it's nice to read books that not a lot of people know about so you can give reactions and recommendations to people for books that they probably never heard of before. So that's exciting, but also I'm just, I'm a sucker to fit in and this is just, ah, so that's fine. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good reading month. I feel like I'm most excited for You Don't Know Me By My Name or Lore. I definitely feel like I'm most excited for Lore, but if I'm choosing out of the Goodreads Chooses My TBR books, I think You Don't Know My Name sounds really good. I haven't read a good female spy book since I Tell You I Love You But I'd Have to Kill You or something along those lines by like Ali Carter or something like when I was 13. So this is definitely gonna be a good one I think and I think I'm least excited for The Girl with the Whispering Shadow because the first book was just so weird and I, I think the second book will be like interesting because it definitely left off on a like a like a cliffhanger like I want to know what's going on but do I at the same time you know what I mean so that is it that is all I have for you guys today thank you for tuning into this video please like comment and subscribe for more content I do post twice a week and until next time bye readers